These people represent a small fraction of the nearly 30,000 foster grandparent program volunteers and the 250,000 children they serve every year. What is a foster grandparent? I'm a mentor. I'm a tutor. I am a counselor. I'm a role model. And I am, I am a friend. friend. Established in 1965, the Foster Grandparent Program was developed by Sergeant Shriver as part of President Lyndon Johnson's War on Poverty. The program was created to provide volunteer opportunities for limited income senior citizens and enable them to work with children who demonstrate special or exceptional needs. The National Association of Foster Grandparent Program Directors was created in 1971. Since that time, the association has served as the principal advocate for the Foster Grandparent Program in general, for the furtherance of the goals of the Foster Grandparent Program, and for the well-being of foster grandparent volunteers. From the 20 original programs based exclusively in institutions for children with severe mental and physical disabilities, there are now over 330 programs across all 50 states, the District of Columbia, Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands. Foster grandparent volunteer sites include public schools, hospitals, daycare and Head Start centers, juvenile detention facilities, substance abuse treatment centers, and shelters for the homeless and abused. They work with children coping with abandonment, homelessness, abuse and neglect, AIDS, drug and alcohol abuse, and chronic or terminal illness. They work with school dropouts, teen runaways, and children of prisoners. They tackle learning and developmental disabilities, mental illness, juvenile delinquency, and teen pregnancy. Usually we assign a, a foster grandparent volunteer to one of the kids that's struggling. Struggling academically, struggling, struggling with behaviors, may have some emotional um, deficits, may have some abilities that just won't allow that student to focus and to be attentive to instruction. It may have some motivational issues where the student just doesn't want to be in school. They help me through my situations that I've been having, like the situations with my mother and my father. A lot of it is the nurturing aspect of it. They bring an aspect into the building that our kids need, um, which is that nurturing, that caring, um, that concern, you know, that only a grandparent can really give. Just don't be on the streets. Don't want other people doing because you could get hurt or something happen to you one day or you be in jail for life or you be dead on the ground six feet. That's what they're trying to teach you. The bond between the foster grandparent and the child is a strong one. The foster grandparent is often the only person in a child's life who is there every day, who accepts the child, focuses on the child's successes, and encourages him or her no matter how many mistakes the child makes. So I could take them in as a child that I would love as my child. And they help us out when we don't know things, like if we have problems or anything, they help us out. Well, I think that a, a trend towards getting community involvement in, you know, any schools, but especially public inner city schools, is, is going to be pretty vital to help those kids succeed. You know, they come with a lot of complex situations and, and the more people that are there for them and can support them, the better, I think, for the kids. If they have more people to be accountable to, more people to care about them, that they can trust. I mean, she's very consistent in being here every day. They know she's going to be here. So they can rely on that, and that's um, very important for them. The benefits of the relationships are not only in the child's favor. Foster grandparents volunteer an average of 15 to 40 hours weekly, and say because of this investment of time, they feel and stay healthier. 
and just as important, that they feel needed and productive. It is a beautiful thing to have something to do to reach the age that I am now and being able to have that brain keep functioning pretty good. They love coming here. They really do enjoy being a part of the Hartford Heights family. You know, I love the kids and it gives me something to get up in the morning and know I got somewhere to go. Beyond the special bond between the foster grandparent and child, the program is producing positive results in other ways. A 2006 National Performance Measurement Survey of the Foster Grandparent Program, conducted by the agency with federal oversight for the program, the Corporation for National and Community Service, found that 81% of children served demonstrated improved academic performance, 90% demonstrated increased self-image, 56% improved school attendance, and 59% were reported to have a reduction in risky behavior. In 2009, the Edward M. Kennedy Service America Act was passed. In an interview with Larry King, Patrick Kennedy talked about his father's vision for national service as seen through the Serve America Act. And that's why they have the Ted Kennedy National Service okay. Act, which allows people, grandparents to be foster grandparents, think, young people to go on and help their communities. It just symbolizes what my dad always believed, that patriotism is defined by how you help your fellow American in the broadest sense, not just wearing the uniform of our country in military times, although that's what he truly respected in our veterans, but all types of service as well. Senator Kennedy wrote in his memoir, True Compass, This is the greatest lesson a child can learn. It is the greatest lesson anyone can learn. It has been the greatest lesson I have learned. If you persevere, stick with it, work at it, you have a real opportunity to achieve something. Sure, there will be storms along the way, and you might not reach your goal right away. But if you do your best and keep a true compass, you'll get there. For 250,000 children every year, a foster grandparent serves them as their own personal true compass. 2010 marks the 45th anniversary of the Foster Grandparent Program.